What's up, everyone? I'm Jackie. And I'm Lindsay. And we are Women Leaders in Sports Medicine. Here to help you grow your game and own your game. Today, we're excited to share our podcast with Dr. Emma Makes, team chiropractor with the Chicago Bears and clinic director of Advanced Care Specialists. Today, we discuss her importance of self-evaluation of all components of care, how to get experience in working and communicating with the interdisciplinary team early on, using literature for self-growth and learning to communicate, and working as a female in the NFL. Stay tuned towards the end as she also shares a really funny story about the first time she started working with the Chicago Bears. If you want more information about the network, head over to www.womenleadersinsportsmedicine.com. As always, thank you for joining, and we hope you enjoy listening in. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another podcast with Women Leaders in Sports Medicine. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever time of the day you're joining us. We appreciate it. We have Emma Minx on with us today, who is a chiropractor with the Bears, as well as wearing um, many other hats, I guess you could say, which we'll definitely go into today. How are you today, Emma? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're super excited you're here and definitely ready to hear about some um, advice I think you could give to our listeners. Yeah, thanks for joining us. I, I think, you know, something on the tip of everyone's tongue recently is, um, has anything changed recently for you with everything going on with the pandemic or are you able to kind of keep some semblance of a normal, normal working life? Yeah. Uh, so I feel pretty lucky, uh, during these times cause I know, um, it's a hard uh, struggle for small businesses and, um, for a lot of us out there. And, um, we so a uh, little summary on me is um, I am a chiropractor. I have my own clinic that I run, and I also am a clinic director for an integrated medical clinic in Wisconsin. And um, so my own clinic has been relatively slow, um, just because it's chiropractic only. Uh, it's you know somewhat elective in nature, but uh, my clinic in Wisconsin we've been uh, pretty busy. We haven't had that much of a um, we haven't been down that much, but it's been kind of nice because it's given us a chance to take a step back and work on the things that we've been meaning to work on, but we haven't been able to because we were so busy. Um, so we're just trying to kind of find a silver lining in all of this and uh, take advantage of it. So um, I'm lucky because I still get to have somewhat of a normal routine and um, I don't uh, you know, I haven't had any time off of work or anything. So I, I think that uh, it's, it's been good for us. We've, we've kind of used it to our advantage. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's great. I think a lot of, uh, especially private practices are, are, like you said, using this time to start to get to some things that maybe they weren't able to get to prior. Uh, it just depends on how, how busy your mm -hmm. clinic was. I know uh, myself included, we're starting to hustle out a lot more marketing stuff. I think Lindsay's doing the same thing and uh, starting to to look into some of the other things that we could be doing for our community. So that's great that you've been able to, to stay somewhat consistent uh, with things. Um, one of the big things I want to get into uh, is kind of your story. What's your, what's your why of getting into chiropractic? So um, I had always been really passionate about science and uh, more specifically biology. I remember being in, in high school and just like loving anatomy. And so I knew that I was going to go into some type of career medicine. Um, so I also was a softball player. I played softball in college and I really struggled with a lot of shoulder and elbow issues, tendonitis. And, you know, for a while, the solution was always rest, you know, rest, ice, um, uh, ibuprofen and it just wasn't really working for me. And so it, it got to a point where I wasn't sure I was going to be able to, continue in college. And it was a dream of mine to play in college. And so um, I happened to get connected with a sports chiropractor. And um, he uh, worked with professional teams. And he also did uh, not just chiropractic, but a soft tissue technique called ART. And um, my mom was actually seeing him because she had been in a car accident and she was like, she begged me to see him, like, just go see him. He, he's really good. And, and so I was like, all right, you know, fine. I kind of have nothing to lose. And so, 
um, what was really interesting was, you know, I was going there for a shoulder issue and he asked me, do you hit everything to right field? And yeah, it's kind of my, um, my claim to fame. I'm an opposite field hitter. And, and so he's like, well, your back is tight and you can't rotate. Um, it's affecting your throw, but it's also affecting your ability to hit. And so as you, as I work on you, you're going to be able to hit better well as well. And, um, I remember asking him like, all right, you know, that's great, but how much time am I going to have to sit out? He's like, no, 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 like none. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, what? Keep doing, yeah. Keep doing what you're doing and I'm going to make you feel better and, and you're going to start hitting better. And so, um, it actually happened and I, I went from hitting, uh, you know, everything to right field. All of a sudden I was hitting um, doubles and triples and I was hitting an inside pitch, which I hadn't really ever been able to do. And, and so it kind of got my wheels spinning and thinking like, you know, maybe there's, there's something to this. Um, the orthopedic route didn't necessarily appeal to me because I just, I didn't, I didn't really like the approach of like, here's what you have going on. And um, here's like a medication or uh, you have to take time away. I really liked that he was able to diagnose me and then be able to actually treat me and make me feel better right away. Um, and so I kind of felt like it was a little bit more of an effective treatment model. And um, I had a similar experience in college as well, where I was struggling to hit. So I was like, I got to go see the chiropractor and I started hitting better. And, um, and so I decided, you know, I, why don't I go help other people like it helped me? And so I decided to go that route. I love it. I think that's such a, a frustrating thing when I have a patient come in and they tell me that their doctor told them like, oh, you have bad knees. You shouldn't never squat again. Or, you know, you're not going to be able to do the sport you love to play or just take the time off. I think I'm such a big proponent for like active care. And, and I think you had a cool experience and, you know, you saw a very clean cause and effect and uh, that would mm -hmm. excite anyone to want to get into that field, especially if you really relate to sport and relate to people as a mover. So mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and I'm glad to hear that he gave you an action plan. That's great. Kind of like, I, I feel like I see that frustration a lot in my patients. They're like, well, now I know what's wrong, but now I don't know what to do about it. And yeah. I'm like, that's why we're here. That's why we are, we're business, right? Exactly. <laughs> Which is great. Yeah. Um, so shifting a little more from your why into your journey, because you do have a lot of different roles right now, which I think is mm -hmm. so unique and hopefully we'll uh, perk our listeners attention. So how did you kind of, can you tell us a little about your little bit about your journey and how you went through whatever you went through to get to being a director in an integrative practice, which I think is amazing. And hopefully that's where all the medicine is going um, to also owning your own clinic to also working in the NFL. Sure. So uh, that chiropractor that I mentioned earlier, that uh, evaluated me and, and obviously kind of impacted the way I, uh, did, what career I decided to pursue. Um, I stayed in good touch with him and he actually hired me and gave me my first job out of school. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty cool story. And, um, and so I worked with him for about four and a half years. And um, part, kind of big, the biggest reason why I wanted to work there was uh, not just because of the impact that he had on me and I liked the treatment style, but he worked with a lot of professional teams. And so my hope was that down the line um, that I would be able to kind of, you know, get my opportunity to work with a professional team. So at the time he was uh, the Bulls and Blackhawks chiropractor. He had another associate who works with the White Sox and the Sky were kind of in there. And so I thought, you know, I, I at least, um, I, there's something great to learn from him. And, and it's interesting because when I was in school, they always talked about like start your own clinic or be an independent contractor because it's the most lucrative. And, uh, and they were always kind of shied us away from being an associate. And for me, I thought that was kind of the best opportunity for me because, or the best option, because I, I never considered myself like a business person. I, you know, I, I was like, I don't, I just want to be a chiropractor. I don't want to, have to worry about marketing or, um, 
setting budgets or any of that. And, uh, and so that's kind of why I went that route. And it, it was a great opportunity for me because it allowed me to become a very good chiropractor. And um, it also eventually opened the door for me to get my opportunity to work with the bears. And, um, but then as I kind of, I, as I moved along in that practice and I felt like I kind of was mastering this part of being a chiropractor, I realized there's more. I wanted more than um, just showing up and adjusting and treating. I wanted yeah. to kind of go into more of a management position and I wanted to be able to kind of impact the vision of a company and, and play a role in directing that and, and moving there and kind of growing there, helping a company grow. And, um, and so my uh, good friends from chiropractic school have this clinic advanced care specialist up in Wisconsin, and uh, they um, created this integrated model. And, and so as we kind of, you know, we always stayed in good touch and it got to this point where he was like, you know, I, I really need someone to be uh, what you're asking for, what you're looking for. You know, I need someone to help kind of manage the clinic um, and help it grow. And, and um, so I, it was a really, really hard decision um, just because uh, Dr. Yas, the guy I worked for, is just, um, he had such an impact on me. And, and uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity that he gave me and the doors that he opened. But I just really felt like it was kind of time to move on. Um, and so I decided I was afraid to leave all my patients in the area. And I always did have a dream of starting my own practice. So I kind of had the opportunity to start my own and also um, uh, join this practice in Wisconsin and um, come into like a director, a management role. Um, and so I, I feel really fulfilled in a lot of ways now because I still get to treat I'm at my own clinic and then I'm in this management kind of business development role in Wisconsin. And, um, and then I still get to work with the bears. So it's, it's, um, I'm, I feel very lucky where I'm at in my career. Yeah, that's awesome. I think sometimes when we're all just starting out, um, in the medical field, you don't realize how many different hats we'll just say, you're able to wear and how fulfilling that could be. So I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You were able to identify kind of what you wanted out of each situation and then go for it. That's great. Yeah. Um, and then also it's just a great story that, you know, the guy who impacted you the most in this profession was the same person who ended up giving you your first job. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's, there's so much out there about, Oh, like, what do I do when I, or what do I look for when I'm choosing my first job? Like, how do I interview? So I think that's mm -hmm. just such a unique story and that's awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I, I feel lucky just because I, I never had to set out a resume You know, I didn't have to interview at, you know, 10 different jobs. I was able to, you know, just develop this relationship and shadow an intern with him and, and then, um, you know, for him to offer me my own job it, uh, or my first job, I just felt very lucky to be in that position. Definitely. Yeah, I think, you know, there, there's a lot of luck in it, but there's there's got to also be a lot of hard work in there, too, that allowed those people to want you as a part of their team. So going off of that note, what are some things that you felt were important to maintain or portray or mindsets to hold that allowed you to have those opportunities and for those people to want to ask you to be a part of their team? So I think this comes from my sports background. Um, but I always, I think it's really important to always self-evaluate. Um, and always analyze every interaction that you have in practice, um, whether that's uh, sk the skilled part of it where you're doing an adjustment, um, maybe it's the evaluation part of it. But I also think that it's your ability to um, communicate and connect with the patient. And so um, I always found myself kind of asking, and I think I continue to do this, and, it, and it's, I think, why you get better or 
you know, how you can always be improving is always self-evaluating. Where can I improve? Where, uh, and I, I think I, it's a better example or a better way to explain it would be to give you an example. So it's like you, um, you're evaluating a patient and you're explaining kind of the diagnosis and what's going on. And all of a sudden you're like talking and talking and that patient kind of gives you that glazed look in their eyes where you're like, maybe I'm kind of being boring or maybe this is over their head. And so it's, it's kind of taking that moment after that interaction and say like, how can I improve? How can I be better? Um, and how can I uh, maybe be more concise with my explanation, but then also to realize that there are patients out there that want a, a, a very in-depth inter- uh, uh, description of what's going on. And, um, and so I think my ability to read people and connect with people kind of set, maybe sets me apart from the next person. Um, because I think that practices, the easiest part of what we do is evaluating and diagnosing. Um, I think what separates us from good providers to great providers is their ability to connect and manage patients. And how do you handle a compliant patient versus a non-compliant patient? How do you handle someone who has, um, doesn't know boundaries and how do you, how do you manage that situation? How do you, uh, get their respect? Like, how do you connect with them? And I think that, um, on the other side of it too, I'm always evaluating like my skills, like, uh, what was that? I what was I feeling, or you know, what I I don't feel like I understand the mechanics of the shoulder as well as I could. So I'm going to go out and research that. Or um, it really played a big role when I started working with the Bears and I was adjusting these big guys. Mm-hmm. And it was like I just feel like they keep rolling over when I'm trying to set up that adjustment. So what can I do to try? and improve that and see if it helps. And then it's like, I tried it. Oh, okay. That adjustment was better. It was more effective. So I think that comes from my background of um, sports of like, you know, my coach told me that I need to um, keep my hands back more. I'm swinging too early. And then uh, I go back into the box. I think that I'm always trying to do that and whatever I do. And that's played a big role in, in my, um, I think my growth and, myself as a physician and, um, and an entrepreneur too. Yeah, I think it, you hit a lot of, you know, really good nails on the head, so to, so to speak. I think the biggest overlying theme is being able to be a self-directed and self-guided learner, not only mm-hmm. in your craft, but in like who you are as a person as well. I think I totally agree you know, the evaluation, the treatment, the plans of care, that type of stuff is, is relatively easy. It's why you hustle and you work so hard in school. You have amazing mentors that teach you those things, but you have to be able to take your day-to-day actions and figure out, okay, what could have been better? And not only to use that on, you know, the things that maybe didn't go well, but there's always something to do better, even in the interactions that were really good. Maybe I could have been more, you know, precise and clean about how I explained something. You know, maybe I could have held that adjustment a little bit tighter, whatever it may be. And I think that's something that is a skill in its own to be able to have. Um, so that's awesome that you, you're you working on that too. So I know you guys had Andrea Hayden on with the Minnesota Twins a few weeks ago, and she's a dear, dear friend of mine. And I think she sums it up the best. And she always asks herself three questions after any interaction. And it's, uh, what did I do well? Um, what did I learn? And what could I have done better? So I think it's a it's a, a good way to approach every situation to always get better. 100, 110%. Um, and the other thing I'm just going to touch on, because I for individuals who are very driven in our field, I feel like when you look at things, you have to get accomplished. It's like a checklist. So I got to get undergrad done and I got to do all these things to make sure I get into grad school. All right. Check that box. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm in grad school. I got to get through grad school and do all these things to get to a residency or get to a pro team or get to wherever I want to be. Check that box. Um, And just things I'm seeing in individuals who are younger and how I was a couple years ago is, oh, I'm checking all these boxes, but are these boxes what's making me feel fulfilled in my profession? Am I like linking this back to what I feel like my purpose is? Like why I did this in the first place? So Mm -hmm. I just really appreciate that you, you touched on that. And then going off a little bit with, um, connection, um, and 
you've treated, it looks like across different ages, different sports. You know, I saw on your LinkedIn, you've worked at a CrossFit gym as well. Um, Mm -hmm. So going off of that, so with being involved in a lot of different sports at different professional levels, um, can you touch on why you feel like those experiences might be beneficial to a younger clinician or even why you felt those experience experiences were beneficial to where you are now and the ability to work with a professional team? Mm-hmm. One of the best experiences I had just coming out of school was I reconnected with uh, where I went to high school. And um, I had, while I got my chiropractic degree, Logan University, where I went, offered a concurrent master's degree in sports science and rehab. So uh, right when I was kind of waiting for my chiropractic license to come through, I took the opportunity to do my master's internship at that time. And I got connected with um, my uh, high school, as I said before, and I was kind of using it as an opportunity to build a relationship and um, to kind of hopefully, you know, open the door to maybe they could send me patients when I established my practice. And but um, I was humbled really quickly when I started working with them because I was kind of using it, like you just said, to, to check off check the box off of, um, of like getting my internship done. And, uh, I also was like a little nervous what they thought about a, chiro- a chiropractor. And so right when I walked in there, like one of my first days in there, they said, you know, uh, we're happy to have you. And, um, they said, but what we're really excited about is I think there's a lot that you can teach us. I was like, what? Like, I'm just a new grad. And here is this athletic trainer who's been in, in the field for um, 20 plus years is looking at me saying like, hey, I, there are things that I have to learn from you just as much as you have to learn from us. And I think um, really quickly that got me exposed into the sports medicine environment that you have to work as a team. Mm-hmm. And it was a it was a really great opportunity because I had to figure out how I could integrate into that sports medicine model, and um, and I, they also invited me to work uh, work the sidelines on Friday nights with the football That's game. Awesome. And uh, it was I wasn't ever really that busy. I would occasionally work on uh, some soft tissue on players. They would like mm-hmm. tighten up or cramp during the game or the center one time um, was cramping up in his low back and he was having a hard time snapping the ball oh, just during no. a playoff game. So they were like, Emma, like, come over no there. pressure, <laughs> fix him. Yeah, work on this guy. <laughs> um, but one of the most valuable experiences was standing on that sideline and you're with the team of the, uh, the orthopedic physician and the um, athletic trainers. And you're having to stand on the sideline for at least, two hours or so and you're having a small talk and I I was just new in practice and I didn't really have any you know stories or shop to talk and I was like oh my gosh you know what am I going to say with this this orthopedic he's been in practice for so many years I was like I was very intimidated at the situation and I learned how to uh, converse and, and talk in that environment. And what was interesting is, you know, now you fast forward for four or five years and here I am on the sidelines of an NFL team standing with the orthopedic surgeon and, and the other physicians and also the athletic trainers are right there. And it was like this, this opportunity I had four years previously at a high school level really prepared me for that opportunity because it's not a, just about uh, being a good chiropractor, but it's also about how you, how do you integrate in, into that team model? Like how can you be beneficial, but also to know your place and know um, uh, when you speak up and when you don't and how you connect to the other physician and how um, the, you know, when you're on the sideline, when you're riding the bus together, it's like always making those good impressions. And I wouldn't, I would have been kind of lost if I didn't have that opportunity right out of school. So 
Um, I think sometimes we look at it as like, oh, it's, you know, just a high school level sport. But um, like I said, it, it just really prepared me for that opportunity at a much higher level. That's awesome. I mean, it's probably, I'm a, I can't think of the right word right now, but super unique to be standing on the sideline right now and think about, hey, this is where I was X amount of years ago. Isn't it kind of funny that here I am now? Mm -hmm. Um, but I, as someone who's been in a similar situation to that, um, with a high school football team by me, I would definitely add to and hope that listeners take a little piece from that on how important it is to learn how to communicate across the field, because there are times when you really want to say something, or you really think your opinion is important. And in the big picture, it might not be. And it might be better for you to just listen (laughs) and uh, hear what everyone else has to say. Or there are times when it's really important you step up for your athlete for whatever reason that may be and voice your opinion. So I think Mm -hmm. that's, that's such an awesome experience that our listeners will hopefully take to heart. And I think um, it kind of goes back to a little bit what we were talking about earlier, that the thing that sets you apart as a clinician isn't always how good you are at being a clinician. It's about being able to have those conversations from an interdisciplinary perspective uh, and Mm -hmm. be able to have strong communication, be able to understand someone as a person. Um, But I think your story at the beginning of of being on the sidelines of the high school game, there's something that's so relatable to a lot of individuals in in chiropractic care or rehab or athletic training. You know, they're always coming into new experience as young clinicians and going like, Oh, that person definitely knows more than me. Or, Oh, like, you know, that ortho doc is, you know, notoriously the person that yells at someone all the time and it makes you nervous to go into. Um, So being able to learn how to deal with that situation, I think is huge. So going off of, you know, kind of everything that you talked about, you've clearly had some really amazing opportunities and a lot of work on self-growth throughout that journey. Were there ever any moments throughout this journey that, you know, you had some challenges that you maybe had to get over or some obstacles that you didn't expect to kind of come in your way? And, and what sorts of things did you do to try to get over them? So I'll kind of speak to two growth points um, that I kind of was uh, struggling and then obviously what I did to um, kind of overcome them. But the first was when I first graduated, I was having a hard time because, um, like I said earlier, I thought the hardest part of my job was going to be identifying, diagnosing, treating, evaluating. And, and it, I quickly realized that was the easiest part of the job because I always say the body doesn't talk back to you. Um, the body kind of gives you all the answers that you need or that you're looking for. And um, it became kind of treating the patient, managing the patient was what I really struggled with. And, and it, it was things that ranged from um, how to tell an athlete, I think you have a stress fraction in your low back. And that means that you're probably going to be out for a few months and uh, delivering that bad news and being able to just kind of be okay with it. And um, empathize with the athlete, but I always, I found myself like really taking that. Um, it, it was, I, I took, it was hard on me. And, um, I also, uh, like I said, I was just kind of struggling with, um, that always wanting to get better and being able, and I was having a hard time leaving work at work. And so I, there was really two books that I dove into that I think really impacted me and helped me kind of get through that time. And, um, one of them was, um, I, it was the book, Atul Gawande, I think is how you say his name. And, um, he is a, he was an ER physician and he talked, he talked about kind of his stories from the ER. And if there's anyone who can talk about, you know, um, taking things being hard on a doctor is a, is an ER surgeon who is losing patients on the table. And so um, being able to kind of like tap into that mindset and read about that was really helpful to me. And then um, the other book, Bob Rotella, he's a, he's known for being a sports psychologist and working with golfers. Um, But he also has worked with like university of Kentucky's basketball team, um, Jordan Spieth, LeBron James. And um, he wrote a book called how champions think 
And he actually takes these concepts that are uh, specific to like sports psychology and he extrapolates them to business. And so um, those things, those two books really had a huge impact on me. Um, and the other one actually uh, just is a great book for making yourself a better clinician is um, I wrote it down here. So I didn't forget. Um, every patient tells a story and it's called the art of the diagnosis. It's written by Lisa Sanders. She was the medical director on the house, the show house. Mm. Um, so cool. it was just, it, it's an incredible book. I really highly recommend anyone to read it. Um, so those, those are kind of the things that really helped me get through it. And then I would say more recently would be my experience with the bears. I, I'm now going to be starting my third season, but um, my first season was just, uh, such a learning experience. And although I would consider myself a good physician, um, I felt like I've learned and I have become an even better physician through that experience. But I think the boundaries or the, um, the kind of struggles that I had was being a female in that environment. And I think as I've come to realize is I was probably more aware of it than everyone else was. I was worried what everyone else was going to think of me and if they thought I was going to be strong enough. Um, and I think once I realized that it, I was really more worried about it than anyone else was, I, I kind of got through it. Um, and, and I realized like, you know, I can do this job just like everyone else. And it, it doesn't matter male or female. It matters like, can you get the job done? And, and, will this athlete, does this athlete think that I can provide them something that will make them better and feel and uh, be more successful, perform better on the field? Yeah, I think those are both. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing those because uh, not everyone's always as open. So we appreciate that. And I know our listeners do too. Um, for our listeners, definitely go back and write those books down. I read one of them, but I trust that all three are amazing, but I think to touch on your boundaries point first, it's a one, a great thing to touch on because especially as a new clinician, um, Jackie, I'm sure can speak to this too, but you don't realize how much you bring home with you. So again, you know, you can only, you have days where you feel like, am I really helping anyone and days where you feel like you're on top of the world? Cause it seems like everyone's getting better. Um, I think she froze again. Are you back? What? I'm, back? I'm there. Oh, okay. Sorry. It looked like you froze again. <laughs> um, so I think that's an important point to learn to set boundaries early in your career. Like trust that you're doing enough work. You've done enough work to get to the position that you're in right now to one, get to where you want to be, but also that you're treating your patient the best that you can. So I love that you touched on that because I think that's very important and something a lot of people don't talk about in the medical field. Um, and secondly, uh, with your, obviously being with the bears, you know, that situation, it sounds like really pushed you outside your comfort zone. You were thrown into a new environment and you adapted and realized, well, I'm just as good as anyone else. Maybe not that, uh, blunt, you seem way more humble than that, but just <laughs> after speaking with you, like you could do your job just as good as anyone else. So Am I providing the athlete the care they need? So I'm, I'm glad you touched on that as well, because it's important when you're thrown into an environment you're not comfortable with, you have to learn to adapt. I mean, I hate to link this back to COVID too a little bit, but that's what the whole world has to do right now, especially the medical mm -hmm. field. Like this is an extremely uncomfortable environment. And in order to stay in business, we're going to have to adapt. How can we still help our patients? Um, so I really pre appreciate you touching on that as well. Um, so going off of that, a little bit because you've had such wide experiences. Um, what would you say your definition of success is? That's a hard question. Know. I know <laughs> <laughs> it is a really hard um, question. I think that it's something pro probably what fulfills you. And, and the reason why I say that is because um, if you feel fulfilled uh, as a provider, as an individual, I think that, that it's only going to push you and motivate you to kind of push those boundaries. And, um, and I think it's when we don't feel fulfilled or satisfied by what we're doing is when we kind of get stagnant. So 
I would say that, um, yeah, I think whatever fulfills And I think that it's okay that that, that changes. And um, so success might be defined in, uh, in one year, it might mean one thing and in another year, success might mean another, um, something else to you. And um, I think that, you know, I look back on, you know, the first part of my career when I first graduated, it was like, I want to, I, I'm so excited by uh, a patient that tells me, hey, you know, I, I wasn't able to um, play tennis and uh, you were able to get me back to playing tennis in three visits. And uh, that was really exciting. It was like I helped them get there um, or I facilitated them to get there. And uh, but I think that eventually I realized, like, I, I found myself not being fulfilled or excited when a patient would come in and say, like, I didn't think I was going to be able to get on my flight and uh, I was able to to get on that flight because of the work you did on me. And I, I found myself, I was like, I just, I'm not like motivated by that. That doesn't excite me anymore. And I think that's when I really had to start looking. And, um, and now, you know, where I'm at as a clinic director, I uh, feel really fulfilled or motivated and excited by creating an environment that is going to help more people. And um, that is um, uh, really exciting for me. I'm now creating this environment that, and I'm helping others um, help more people. And so uh, I would say like success for me five years ago would have been, you know, treating a patient really well. And um, now success for me is uh, creating a, uh, an efficient um, clinic and, um, doing it well and providing a great experience for patients. That's, uh, that's awesome. I think one of the biggest things coming out of that is that you shouldn't let your idea of success be like one single thing, but be open to it changing as you change, right? Cause like each year that you practice, you change as a person. And I think it's a very real thing to say, you know, like you had mentioned earlier, that the things that excited you before that patient coming in and saying like, I was able to do this, sometimes doesn't always motivate you to keep on going. And you have to keep on looking to self analyze yourself again and say like, well, why isn't this fulfilling me? What else do I need? And also, you know, taking the time to say, oh, well, now it's time for me to grow that perspective from the single patient but now I'm going to take that same perspective there and create this community that's going to heal even more people. So I think that's, that's a great definition of success in, in being malleable and that idea of being fulfilled. That's huge. Um, kind of coming to a conclusion, you know, you've, you've had an amazing career. You're still having an amazing career. I'm excited to see the things that you do in the future as well. But what are some pieces of advice that you could give some young clinicians or young individuals who are trying to come out of this? I would say um, trying to connect with other individuals uh, who are maybe ahead of you a little bit. Um, I really think what you guys are doing is really special and creating a, opening a lot of doors for younger graduates and younger clinicians because I think that, um, especially in chiropractic, so I can't really speak to other professions, but at least in chiropractic, I don't think we do a good job of mentoring our younger grads or our, um, uh, kind of our newer clinicians. And, and there's this, I don't know, you know, where it came from, but it's like, you know, I had to pay my dues, so I'm going to make the younger grads kind of pay their dues. And so I think that, um, it, it was really hard to, you know, find like mentors in the profession because it just seems like we don't want to help each other. And so I think uh, students getting connected in groups like this is an amazing experience. I wish I would have tried to network and connect with people more um, than, than when I did earlier. And I think when you're a student, you have this like a special window for you to be able to do that because, um, when all of a sudden you graduate and you're in the profession, you're now a competitor with each other is kind of what it seems like. And so I think that students should kind of um, uh, leverage that position to connect with other people in the field to seek out their advice. 
Um, but I, you know, to kind of circle back around to what we were saying before, I just think that it's, you know, just never stop trying to get better, you know, never stop trying to evaluate yourself of where I can improve. Is it in my skills? Is it in the treatments that I offer? Is it in my, you know, palpation skills? Is it, um, even, uh, you know, in my referral network, can I find a better person to refer to for different cases? And even, you know, is it, uh, are there better ways that I can describe this um, diagnosis to a patient? So I think that it's just like always having that hunger to get better uh, is, can be the best thing for you. Yeah, I think those are two great pieces of advice. Um one network as much as you can. Don't be afraid to ask for something more than not. People want to help you. You just need to ask. Yeah. yeah. And then two, yeah. Don't stop trying to get better. Don't stop self-reflecting and recognizing things that make you feel fulfilled, things you might still need to work on, things you do well. Um, And I also like that you brought up the point that sometimes it feels like a competition in this field, because that is something we're trying to negate at the end of the day, we all need to work together to make the patient, the Mm -hmm. athlete, whoever's in front of you as a person better in whatever capacity they can. So that's one of the real reasons we are super, super excited to have you as a mentor and extremely grateful, like not even for just sitting down with us today, but again, uh, choosing to be a part of this network and I'm excited where we all go from here. So thank you so much for taking the time today. And I'm sure our listeners appreciate it as well. Yeah. Um, real quick, I, uh, one of your guys, um, questions that you had sent to me ahead of time was, uh, to tell a funny story or something kind of, yeah, yes, let's so, do it. <laughs> um, I do, I do want to share and I, I share it because I think that, um, you know, when you're a new grad or a younger clinician, you look up to, uh, I, I was the you know, the same way I remember looking up uh, Jen Reiner. It, she's now since changed her name. And um, I think it's Marcella, I want to say. And uh, she's now with the twins. But at the time, she worked at a facility in um, out in California, Fitness Quest with Todd Durkin. And she worked with Drew Brees. And um, I think that we looked at, you know, anyone in the field. And they just seem like they're on such a pedestal. So I, I always just want to share the story to realize, like, we're all humans. and. Um, and so on my first day going down to training camp to work with the bears, uh, I was so, so nervous. And I was, uh, I was even worried about like what I was going to wear because it was an athletic environment, but I was a doctor and a physician and I wanted to, you know, still look professional. And so I, um, you know, we didn't have any bears gear at the time. And so I, I was like, okay, so I have a, a white shirt I can wear or a, a Navy shirt sticking with the colors. So I was like, well, I'm probably going to be sweaty and I don't want, you know, armpit uh, sweat showing. So I'm going to wear uh, the white shirt. And so I'm driving down there and I'm like, I'm having this like internal dialogue, like you can do this. Um, a hip is a hip. You've worked on other athletes. You've worked on Olympians. Like you're, you're going to be fine. Like, this is okay. You can do this. And, uh, I'm sitting there and I see them walk by and they're getting out of practice. And when these guys are in, they've got their studs on their cleats, they're in pads, their helmets are, they, they look giants and they're already <laughs> like big guys, but now all of a sudden you add like all this stuff and they're yeah. giant. And I just, I start thinking like, Oh my gosh, am I going to be able to do this? And I was, I was so nervous. And then I, my nerves just went through the roof and I was, and we were also, um, now we're very lucky training camp got moved to Hallis Hall at Lake Forest and we had a $110 million renovation. So we have this like state of the art facility now, but at the time training camp was at this, um, D2 or NAIA school, Olivia Nazarene. And, um, so we're like crammed into this small training room and it's hot. And, and so I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm like, I, it's warm in here. And I don't know if I can do this. Like these guys are so big. And then the first guy walks in and he's like, you know, our a star running back. And I'm like, this is the first guy that I'm going to work on. And so I start working on him and I feel myself like starting to sweat a little bit. <laughs> And I go to adjust his ankle and all of a sudden 
I feel sweat <laughs> fall off my face onto him. And I'm just like, you know, I'm like mortified at this point. And, um, at, and I'm, it's now like players are starting to come in and there's a line and I'm like, there's this, again, it's the internal dialogue that all these guys are in here and they're looking at me and I, do I think I'm going to do a good job? What do they think of me as a female? And like, and now it, I'm working on these big, you know, these huge guys and these guys who have size that are like the size of my waist. And, and so it's physical work. And the sweat is just like pouring off me. My ponytail is like stuck to my neck <laughs> and, the, and the towel I'm using to like grip their foot. I'm like wiping my, you know, my yeah. face. And, <laughs> and, um, and all of a sudden I look down and the white shirt that I'm so concerned about is now like see-through. Oh you know, no. Who, who cares about like the armpit? sweat yeah really right <laughs> this shirt now is see-through and so I'm just like just survive like just get through this You're gonna yeah it. so I do and uh and um you know I just kind of hope to like everyone forgot about that day and you know never be talked about again and so our last trip uh for the Bears was to Minnesota our first season and the docs and trainers always got to dinner on Saturday nights. And so I'm sitting there and uh, one of the docs, um, Dr. Carrie Ellis, he's an orthopedic down in Bourbon. A. I, you know, I got to know him really well throughout the season and we're at dinner and he leans over to me and he's like, Hey, um, he's like, you know, you've done a, a really great job this season. And, and he goes, but man, I remember that first day at training camp. <laughs> He's like, you know, I, was, I, I want to see like how you were going to handle yourself in the situation. And he goes, you were sweating like a pig. And <laughs> I said, I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope like I was, I hope like no one noticed. And he's like, oh no, you know, I saw. And uh, he like, goes, but thanks. <laughs> yeah. And so I said, you had no idea what was running through my head at that time. You know, I just, I was so nervous and I wasn't sure, you know, if I could do it and what the situation and environment was going to be like. And he goes, you know what, the really interesting thing is I had no idea that you even thought any of that. Um, I just thought that you were working really hard and you handled yourself well. And so um, I think that there's a lot of, you know, things to take away from that. One being that um, even though I, you know, kind of hit this like pinnacle in my career, I still was very nervous uh, at the opportunity. Um, but also that in that moment of like nervousness and anxiousness, to, I really just tried to stay as calm and just kind of handle it the best you can, because those are the situations that we grow and we get. So I just wanted to share that. that thank you so much for sharing that story. And, and you're absolutely right, I think. A lot of the times we see people that end up in professional sports or in these positions that we want, um, they, you know, they cannot have any nerves and that they must have everything nerves of steel, like no, no way could they be Mm -hmm. as nervous as that. And we're all human. It was still, you know, a new opportunity. And, you know, as some people might think it's a pinnacle of a career and, uh, yeah, that's, that's sometimes you just got to put your head down and survive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, awesome. Well, thank sure. you again, Emma. Um, hope you have a wonderful day and thank you for sharing today. Thank you for listening to the women leaders in sports medicine podcast. This podcast is for you to take a step closer to your dreams. Visit www.womenleadersinsportsmedicine.com to join our roundtables, learn about our mentorship programs, and to let us know what you want to hear. Have a great day, and remember, it's your time to lead.